Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to the Health Station live event. Bringing to you today, I have Bullseye building a bow and arrow. I'm Mr. Ramirez. I'm Coach Ramirez. <laughs> I'm Coach Ramirez. And before we get started, I'd like to thank a few people. First, I'd like to thank the Chula Vista Elementary School District for their support in uh, the stations here at the district. I would also like to thank the Chula Vista Elite Athlete Training Center, which is where the health station is located. And of course, my colleagues in the background, we have Mr. Bruder, Mr. Garcia, and Ms. Bystrack helping me out for today's event. And a couple more people. We are gonna talk about the Easton Archery uh, Center of Excellence here at the Training Center. So I'd like to thank Naomi and Jamie for their support in this event as well. All right, let's take a look at the agenda today. We're gonna start with some history of archery. Then we're gonna talk about Brady Ellison, an American archer. Uh, move into a career spotlight at where you will take the role of a sports technologist. Then we're gonna build a bow and arrow. I can't wait for that. And then finally finish up with the Kahoot game, of course. We got to have that game. Too much fun. All right, well, let's get started. Before I go into the history of archery, what is archery? So archery is a recreational sport, or at this point, an Olympic sport, that, that you use a bow and an arrow. So as you can see from the pictures, Archery can be done by everybody from all ages. It is something that a lot of people are into. If you're not, take a look into it. It's a lot of fun. All right, well, a little bit about the history. So archery goes back as far as 10,000 BC. There's been evidence from about, so that, that's about 12,000 years ago. So it was primarily used for hunting. And as the technology began to get better, it began to be for hunting and war as it, began, as it became more popular. Now, with the emergence of gunpowder, right? Archery then began to take a back seat to that and now moved into just a recreation type of activity and competition as well. Archery became part of the Olympics in the year 1900. So I want to talk about a first question that you, um, a first question that I want you to answer in the question and answer chat. The question is, <laughs> real quick, sorry. The question is, have you had an opportunity to shoot an arrow before from a bow? If you have, think about it, okay? And how did you do? If you haven't, let's, let's continue listening. So before we move on to a question that has to do a little bit more about you using your upper body strength, I wanna tell you a little bit about that. You know me and exercise, right? Upper body strength is those muscles in your arms and shoulders and chest. And so my and so I want you to think about and know that archery, every time you pull that string back to shoot that arrow, you're actually lifting about 40 to 50 pounds, which is as much as a large bag of dog food. If you've ever lifted a large bag of dog food, they're always a challenge to pick up. Let's get to that question I wanted to ask you about shooting a bow and arrow. What is an activity that you do that requires a lot of upper body strength? Okay, so as you look at the pictures, you can see there that monkey bars and climbing is one of those big things. So think about it and write your answer in the chat. All right. We'll get to that answer. We'll get to your answers later. I want to go into an archer named Brady Ellison. 
currently and for uh, the last few years an Olympic archer. Brady Ellison is ranked the number one archer in the world right now. He's participated in world championships since 2007. So when we talk about world championships, they happen every year and the whole world is involved in them. In those world championships since 2007, Brady has won seven gold medals, two silver medals, four bronze medals in those competitions. Not only that, he's also participated in the Olympics. He participated for the first time in 2008 and then also participated in 2012, 2016, and actually just the recent Olympics that happened this year in 2021. So in those Olympics, he's won two silver medals and one bronze medal. And I'm really hoping he can make the next Olympics and go for that gold. Interesting thing about Brady, here at the, train, at the training center, Brady has spent a lot of his time training for his competitions. He's actually lived here and actually finished his high school, his high school diploma here by GED. So while he was going to school, finishing his high school, he was training as well, doing all of his accomplishments. Well, let's get into the nitty gritty of what today is about, and that's sports technology and the career of a sports technologist. Brady definitely has used sports technology to improve his performance in archery. And if you can think of sports technology as the way that we see it, most of us see it, we watch it on TV sometimes. When we're watching a football game, they have that line that shows the uh, first down that's sports technology. So that helps us watch the game. But we're going to be talking about more about how it helps the athlete. So sports technology is there to help improve the performance of an athlete. So at this time, here at the training center, we have the Easton Archery Center of Excellence, which has a sports technology, a technology room for the archers to go in there and check out their, uh, their performance and, and their skill and try to improve it. I recently took a video of a tour of the sports technology room and parts of the Easton Archery Center of Excellence where U.S. archers practice. Let's check it out. We are at the Eason Archery Center of Excellence here at the Chula Vista Elite Athlete Training Center, the place where the elite archers in the nation come together to train for competitions and of course the Olympics. Let's go inside and check it out real quick. As we come in, we see the front desk where Naomi and Jamie take care of the archers here at the training center. This is the indoor, the indoor range, as you can see, targets are pretty far away. 70 meters, which is the Olympic distance. Very, very cool. As we walk down the hallway, we see some memorabilia. Get the archers excited about their possibilities. Some history. And of course, the tech room here down the hall where I wanted to show you some of the things sports technologists kind of deal with in order to help archers improve their performance. As you can see in each corner of the room, you'll see cameras to record their shooting into that bale right there and look to see what they can improve on. They also come in here and adjust their equipment with all the tools and things that uh, are needed in order for the equipment to be in tip top shape. Let's take a look at a video of this room in action as 
Zach Garrett improves his archery performance. All right, so that was the Archery Center uh, here at the training at the training center, the Olympic Training Center. And um, before we get to our uh, questions that hopefully you were able to answer um, that you see up on the screen, I also wanted to tell you that uh, starting on October 16th, Naomi and Jamie are going to have lessons and clinics for the public here at the training center at the Easton Archery Center of Excellence. So if you look into that uh, and contact Naomi here, she could give you more information on that if you would like to take up archery as a recreational sport for you. I would recommend it for sure. All right, so let's get to our question that I asked earlier. What is an activity that you do that requires a lot of upper body strength, like archery does. So let's bring in Mr. Bruder. Uh, are you there, Mr. Bruder? Yes, I am, Coach Ramirez. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty well. How about yourself? <laughs> Excellent. I'm doing great. And so I asked a question, um, and I was hoping that I gotten some answers about where they use their upper body strength. Yeah, we got some great answers. By the way, we did have a handful of students from Marshall and Olympic View and a few other places say that they actually have uh, had a chance to shoot a bow and arrow before. Uh, but as far as your upper body strength answers, uh, monkey bars is definitely a popular one. Absolutely. Uh, as we can see in the picture there, swimming was another one that was shared. Hmm. There were a lot of gymnastics related ones, um, especially if you know people are trying to do handstands or uh, the uneven bars and things like that. Absolutely. Yeah, a lot of the yeah. time, real quick, a lot of the time we take for granted what we do with our upper body and our arm muscles and chest muscles and shoulder muscles. And we try to do all these activities and they are difficult. So yeah, all those activities definitely use that upper body strength. Uh, yeah, Fernanda, uh, sixth grader, shared about uh, using uh, upper body strength in volleyball. Mm -hmm. We also had Ms. Lamb's third grader sharing about uh, carrying a bunch of gallons of water. I know you and I kind of joke about when we try to carry as many groceries as we can in the house at yeah, once. I always do that. <laughs> you have to try to do it in one trip. Right. Uh, blocking in football, hitting a ball in tennis, zip lining, hiking, all kinds of great things. Yeah, in my favorite sport, baseball, you know, hitting hitting a ball, hitting a baseball definitely takes some upper body strength uh, to have fast hands and fast uh, uh, a fast twitch to the ball with the bat to to try to gain some of that power. Definitely. Well, I know we have a few a, a bunch of people sharing, but I know you have some really cool stuff that you want to get to next. Absolutely. Keep those answers coming in. We can look at them later. Uh, at this time, I'm going to go to the next slide, boys and girls, where uh, before I show you the the, the uh, technology room in action here at the Archery Center of Excellence, I want to ask you a question since we talked about a little bit about technology right now and have you think uh, about this as you learn more about the technology in archery and maybe share. The question is, what skill would you like to improve with the use of sports technology? So think of the things that you kind of do right now and think of something to write in the question and answer uh, chat. As far as what, what, what skill would you like to improve with the use of technology, with sports technology? And put it in there so I can see what you guys have to say. All right, well, let's go ahead and check out the technology room in action here for the archers. The Olympic Training Center uses state-of-the-art equipment and technology to fine-tune the archer's technique. In the 3D room, there's eight infrared sensors throughout the room. They're like little cameras. And then we wear these little 
balls that have infrared reflective tape on them. It will have some on my shoulders, wrists, arm, and it'll plot something that looks like a really detailed stick figure of me, and it'll give you super small measurements of what those points are doing movement-wise during the whole shot. If I went in there on a day where I was shooting really well and I recorded myself, and then a month from now I'm not shooting well, I can go in there, record myself when I'm not shooting well, and see what's the difference. To be able to quantify that is, it's a huge advantage. It's like, okay, well, my hand was like three millimeters in a different position when I was feeling good versus when I was feeling bad. Okay, well, correct my hand, see if that fixes the problem. And then all of a sudden it's, you have a direction rather than just blindly guessing. Garrett also uses the ultra slow motion camera to analyze the minutiae of his technique and details that can't be seen by the human eye. We're looking at some high speed video footage of the actual like shot itself. Um, and so you're able to see some really interesting things about the way the arrow uh, and the archer reacts when the bow is released. That kind of thing shows me in fine detail kind of what's going on with my equipment when I release. So that'll give me some knowledge to go back if I want to tune my bow uh, and then see the changes the different tuning factors make on the equipment. It's about precision because you're thinking about a triangle. So if I change the angle slightly down here, all right, so boys and girls, that was Zach Garrett, a former uh, uh, resident athlete here who, like Brady, also lived here and trained. And so as you saw the other people there with Zach, they were there to help them. Those are the sports technologists that we're talking about and the careers that you might be interested in. So they were there to support the athlete. They're there to collaborate with the results of the, t of the use of the technology and try to get him to understand how the technology is describing uh, the things that he can improve on and um, improve his performance in, uh, in archery. And so not only do they directly work with the athlete, but they also work directly with the technology, maybe to make it better or maybe to bring up new technologies for sports that can be used to improve uh, the athlete's performance. And so if you at all uh, have an interest in the technology in sports, the one thing you can kind of relate to right now is your leg aisle score. And so as you can see on the screen, the leg aisle score for a sports technologist is a 1395. So think about where you're at and the work that you might have to do uh, in your reading to improve uh, to that level. And one of the things I wanted to share is that this is a career card from here in my health at my health station. And one of the cool things or one of the cool activities that I have that I do here with the students is I have them use technology to record themselves, throw a ball, and then they come back, analyze it, check out the way they threw the ball on the video and then use and uh, reference uh, some guidelines on how to throw a ball and see how they do and what they can improve on. And so by the end of that activity, they they mostly become a lot better throwers with, uh, with the ball. So we're, I'm thinking about pitchers and quarterbacks and things like that that throw a ball the use of recording and the use of technology and recording yourself and then watching yourself is something that you can do right now. All right. So that was my presentation on the sports technologist and the career. It is time to get to our build, boys and girls. All right. So as you can see on the screen, the materials you are going to use is glue, masking tape, 12 craft sticks, uh, and then uh, two halves, uh, two halves of a craft stick, so basically 13 craft sticks, short rubber band, three medium straws. We're only going to do one arrow today with the straws, so um, if you have three, you can work on three, uh, and then five unifix cubes, 
or some craft cubes that you might have like you see on the screen. All right, well, let me go ahead and get my camera, my dot camera going. So I'm going to unshare my screen and then get back to Get back to, now give me a second to bring up the screen here. All right, give me one second. Hold on. <laughs> Oops. Technology giving me some issues. All right, so I want to be able to get you. There it is. All right, let me go ahead and share this again so that we can see it. All right. Mr. Bruder, are you able to see my screen? Yes, we can. Perfect. All right, well, let's get to this bill, boys and girls. I'm gonna move myself to my work area. All right, so building a bow and arrow. Now, as I start, as I start building, boys and girls, or before I start building, I want to make sure that you understand the safety factor of building uh, uh, this bow and arrow. And so I'm talking about the safety of after we build it and using it, okay? This is, yes, it's a toy, but I need you to understand that it can hurt somebody if used the wrong way. So make sure that you are not, uh, when you finish, you are not pointing it or shooting it at anybody whatsoever, okay? All right, well, let's get started. Now, I'm using, I'm using a glue gun, and you, if you don't have a glue gun, you're probably using the school glue. And what I want you to understand is that it'll probably going to take, it's probably going to take a little bit longer for you to uh, have, uh, uh, get through this because of the glue that you're using. But stay with it. You will get through it. So, the first step is to take the cubes and put one at each end and one in the middle of a craft stick, just like that. So we have two on the sides and then one in the middle. All right, so. One thing I want you to kind of remember as you're going through this is what you do on one side, you got to do to the other. So I have a craft stick on this side, so I need to put a craft stick on top. So I'm going to put some glue on each one of these blocks. Like I said, for the sake of time on my end, I'm going to go, I'm going kind of quick, but I want you to have the gist of it. And remember, you can always pause, catch up, and then play again to continue. Okay? So here you can see the three craft sticks, or the two craft sticks with the three cubes, one on the ends and in the middle. All right. The next step is to take another craft stick and start the angle of the bow here. So what you're going to do is you're going to find a 45 degree angle to put this next craft stick on. So if you understand angles at this point, this is a 90 degree angle. And what you're going to do is open it up to half, halfway to zero, which is 45 degrees. So half would be right there, zero would be right there. So, and 90 here, so 90 to 45. So I'm gonna glue this right here at a 45 degree angle. Let me 
go. As you can see there, and now I'm going to do what I do to one side, I'm going to do to the other. So as you can see, the bow is starting to take shape. There you go. So there are two 45 degree angles right there. So like I said, I'm going to turn it around. And I'm going to do the same to the other side. But before I put the two craft sticks, you're going to take your last two cubes and you're going to put them at the ends right here, just like this. OK. So I'm going to take this one and put some glue there. Okay, then I'm going to take this one. Put some glue on this side. All right, you can see it kind of taking shape here. And then, of course, my other two craft sticks to close it off. Put glue there and glue there. And as you can see, I'm going pretty quick, right? And you're probably getting a little bit behind right now because of your glue, but be patient. Remember, glue is what keeps it together. You don't want to go too early. I'm going to go to the other side. All right. All right, so there is the shape of the bow. Now, we can possibly use a bow like this, but as you know, when you pull back on the bow, on a regular bow, right, it bends. And so, that structure of a bow needs to be very, very strong. So how are we going to strengthen the structure of this bow? What we're going to do is we're going to make triangles with the rest of these sticks because triangles are the strongest shape, the strongest structure, structural shape that you can use in order to reinforce something. So we're going to make triangles by placing them across the sides to the middle, just like that. So you can see there's one triangle right there. So I'm going to put glue at the end. And make that triangle to make sure I'm reinforcing the bow as much as possible. So there's that triangle there. Let's make another one going the other way. There's my other triangle. So you've maybe seen bridges made with a whole bunch of triangles. And that's the reason why bridges need to be very strong. So they make triangles out of them. Finally, we're going to make the last one that is going to connect the two triangles that we made, making that third triangle right across like that. So there's the third triangle right there, creating a nice strong structure on this side. So doing the same thing to the other side, we're gonna connect the edges. Again, I want to remind you that you can pause the video. I would also like to remind you one more time about the safety. Make sure that you use this for fun by using targets. 
Use cans, use paper with a bullseye, right? Use different things that you can shoot at with the, with the arrow, but never with somebody else or at somebody else. All right, finally, our last and third triangle here to fully reinforce. There we go. All right, so we are now going to put this aside and let it rest and dry. Okay, actually, we have one more step. We're going to take the halves. Okay, the halves are going to be they're going to go in an opposite direction in order for them to hold the string or the rubber band that's going to shoot the arrow. So let's go ahead and glue these on those ends. Opposite direction. So you see the, the, the arc of the bow is going this way and you're going to pull push that up the opposite direction of the arc so that it holds the rubber band. So there's a lot of physical science going on here. If you like physical science, understanding how a bow and arrow works and the physical science behind that is really, really interesting. Specifically, strengthening that bow using these triangles would be a part of that. All right, so there is our bow structure. Let's go ahead and put that aside and let it dry and work on the arrow. So for the arrow, we're going to use a straw. Now the straw is very light. We know what we know that straws are light, right? And the lighter something is, the harder it has flying through the air like an arrow will. Now, if we add if we add weight to one side. So we're going to take that glue stick and cut a notch out. Cut a little piece out. About that big. This is going to add weight to the front of the arrow or the straw in order to guide the straw through the air, having it move in a more consistent way. So when some, so that's what we're gonna put at the front of it by using a piece of tape. All right, so we're gonna put the tape we're going to put the tape halfway up the straw and then we're going to glue we're going to put the piece of glue stick on the other side on the end of it and then we're going to wrap it around so it stays together this is going to add that necessary weight for the arrow to fly through the air with better accuracy. Okay, so there we have. I'm gonna put one more piece to reinforce it. So it doesn't come off as we are shooting the target. There we go. All right, so now you can really feel that it's definitely heavier on one side. You can see that. Now we're going to put a notch on the other side in order for it to catch the string or the rubber band that we are using. So the way we're going to do that, and actually I don't need this much tape, you need just a little piece to go around. You're going to put that at the end of the other side and you're going to wrap it all the way around. In order to reinforce the little notch we're going to make in order for it to catch on the rubber band or the string. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut out the ends or the side corners of the straw, making a little triangle. So let's see if you can see this. There's one side. 
Okay, and then I'm going to cut off the corner end of the other side. And now, as you can see, it's made a notch where it'll catch on to the string. Okay, so you have the glue stick weight on one side and the notched end on the other, making your arrow. All right, it is time now to put the string on our bow. This is pretty solid at this moment. Like I said, you it'll take a little bit longer for your glue to dry, so be patient, okay? And what you're gonna do is you're going to, whoops, you are going to hook the rubber band from one side, stretch it, and take it to the other side. And it'll go right into the end of it right there. Okay. So there's our rubber band and our string that is going to, our rubber band that is going to work like the string that we're going to pull back. Now, one more thing, as you can see, the rubber band has the two sides right there. So what we have to do is we have to close those two together. So we're going to take tape, bind the middle, pinch it together. And make that spot or that area where the notch is going to go through. So just wrap it around just like that. Okay, and so now you have the area where the notch is going to, if you can see that, hook on and be able to pull back on like this. Can you see that? All right, so Putting the arrow through the middle cube, letting it rest on there, notching it up, pulling back, and then shooting it from there. Now, I've tested a few. They do come out with some force. So again, the safety is very, very important that you need to keep in mind, okay? So pull back, let it go, and it will shoot. So that's the structure of the bow. That is how we make this pretty awesome bow, believe me. Get it done and go play by shooting at targets. It's a lot of fun and it really, it really does work. I'm really excited about this one. I'm gonna use it this weekend. <laughs> All right, so that is our bow and arrow. All right, so at this point, I'm going to unshare and go back to my presentation. All right, it is time for our Kahoot game. Let's go ahead and move on to the Kahoot game here. All right. Mr. Bruder, are we ready for our Kahoot game? I think so. I think so. got the got pin it. number up there so people can start joining in if you want to share your Kahoot screen. All righty. There's the pin number again, boys and girls, I want to share. I want to tell you open in a separate window, not a tab, so that you can see my screen and your Kahoot screen as well. Okay. All We're right. also posting that pin in the chat as well. Perfect. All right, let me go ahead and bring up that Kahoot game. There it is. All right, here we go. I see people coming in. And as we're waiting then for the students to sign in, Mr. Bruder, um, I wanted to uh, talk about the question real quick and see if we've got any answers on what technology they might want to use. On what technology they may want to use, uh, 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 what skill they may want to use technology for. 
Yes, we had a whole bunch of different responses about things that they would, uh, what skills they would like to work on using sports tech. So Ooh. I'll go ahead and share those with you while we have some of our friends logging into the Kahoot. Mm -hmm. We got quite a few related to soccer. I know Anna and Dahlia shared that. Uh, talking about being able to kick more accurately and score goals. Oh, yes, absolutely. I know we saw some examples of that in some of the images that you had on your slides about how they use the cameras to help with that and things like that. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Um, I mentioned throwing. Is there any uh, throwing? <clears throat> Yes, and, and you know what, Coach Rumors, before I share those with you, can you refresh your uh, browser screen? Because it looks like it may have froze. Okay, uh, let's see here. But yes, speaking of throwing, we had uh, quite a few of our uh, viewers share about baseball in particular, about using sports, there we go, about using sports technology to uh, help them with pitching, um, and kind of getting away from the throw. And we also had quite a few people share about having sports technology help with uh, batting and, and hitting a baseball. And coach, correct me if I'm wrong, but there's a there's actually some tech that you can put at the bottom of your bat, right? To measure bat speed and things like that. Yes, absolutely. So there there's a technology that records bat speed, records bat angle, um, and record some of the other things that your hands and your upper body's doing uh, in order to show you how um, efficient you're bringing that back to the ball. Um, and it's a really, really good technology that is being used quite a bit uh, by the major leagues right now um, uh, in order to try to improve hitting. And it's by, by understanding whether you are doing certain things um, uh, in those areas or not, uh, it, it then will kind of guide you to, to either go get a lesson or look up different uh, types of uh, activities that you can do to improve bat speed and things like that. Yeah, so uh, it's definitely, it's, it, it's out there and it really does help. Yeah, and I know that same tool is used in softball as well. Mm-hmm, absolutely. We also we also had some people that expressed the uh, interest in being able to use sports technology to help them in swimming. Our friends at uh, Marshall in room 504 mentioned particularly the backstroke. Ooh. Uh, Makai mentioned dribbling and basketball. Absolutely. I'm a huge basketball fan. I know there's some smart basketballs out there that can measure like your shooting angle and things like that as well. Mm-hmm. Yes. We are Angles. Really important. Definitely. Uh, we also had some people mentioning for roller skating, archery, like you talked about, so wrestling as well. So definitely all kinds of interest on in how they could use sports technology to help them uh, become better at those skills. So, yeah, like, Zach, like Zach Garrett was saying in the video, it's an advantage definitely to be able to use the technology. All so right. with that said, I think we're ready to jump into the Kahoot game. All right, so if we're all set on my screen, I'm gonna hit start. See a few people still coming in, but let's get going. Build a bow and arrow for the first question of the day. Here we go. Evidence of archery has been found as far back as Red Triangle 500 years ago. Blue diamond, 10 years ago. Orange circle, 12,000 years ago. And green square, 5,000 years ago. So evidence of archery has been found as far back as 500 years ago, red triangle. Blue diamond, 10 years ago. Orange circle, 12,000 years ago, green square 5,000 years ago. If you remember, I mentioned it on the history slide that I went through. Looks like a lot of the answers are coming in. All 
right. Yes, circle. Orange circle 12,000 years ago. Very good. And we've got gentle, gentle Elbex in the lead right now. All right, next question. Pulling the string on the bow can be as heavy as a. What example did I give? Pulling the string on the bow can be as heavy as a red triangle, large bag of dog food, blue diamond, a kitten, orange circle, a car, green square, a gallon of milk. Pulling the string on the bow can be as heavy as a large bag of dog food, red triangle, blue diamond, a kitten, orange circle, a car, green square, a gallon of milk. Pulling the string on the bow can be as heavy as Red triangle, large bag of dog food, blue diamond, a kitten, orange, circle a car, green square, a gallon of milk. And that is correct. I gave the example of a large bag of dog food. Very good. All right, let's see what the lead has done. Glad Raccoon has taken the lead here. Nice job. For the third question, Brady Ellison is ranked what number in the world? Brady Ellison is ranked what number in the world in archery? Is it red triangle 10, blue diamond 1, orange circle 100, green square 25? Brady Ellison is ranked what number in the world as far as archers go? Red triangle 10, blue diamond 1, orange circle 100, green square 25. Brady Ellison is ranked what number in the world as an archer? Red triangle 10, blue diamond 1, orange circle 100, green square 25, and blue diamond 1. Very nice. Good job. All right. Let's see what the lead is. Bright Buffalo. All right. Lead changing quite a bit. For the last question, what does a sports technologist do? Red triangle. Work with athletes. Blue Diamond helps athletes improve performance. Green or uh, Orange Circle uses technology. Green Square, all of the above. So what does a sport technologist do? What does a sports technologist do? Red Triangle work with athletes. Blue Diamond helps athletes improve performance. Orange circle uses technology. Green square, all of the above. What does a sports technologist do? Red triangle work with athletes. Blue diamond helps athletes improve performance. Orange circle uses technology. Green square, all of the above. All right, looks like most of the answers are in. Yes, all of the above. All of those things is what they get to do. So for a build a bow and arrow, number three, fearless emu, number two, lively glider, and in first place, bright buffalo, number one. Nice job, everybody. Awesome job. All right, let's go ahead and get to our next slide here. All right, ladies and gentlemen. 
That brings us to almost the end of our presentation, of my presentation today to you on Building a Bow and Arrow. I want to remind you on YouTube in our innovation, in our innovation channel, you can see all of our other, including this one, live events for you to see over again and check out what they are. And then also on YouTube channel, you can see the physical education, health and wellness uh, channel where you can get ideas on videos from our own PE teachers here in the district working on that upper body. If you happen to uh, want to take archery and go visit the archery center, remember on uh, October 16th, which is actually next Saturday, uh, they will be beginning the clinics and lessons. Uh, find out about find out more details by calling the archery center and and uh, speaking to Naomi, she can give you a lot more details. So that brings us to my introduction to the next event. So innovation inspired by nature, fish edition with our most favorite teacher, uh, Miss Kiros. Friday, October 22nd at 9 a.m. So boys and girls, be there, be square. Again, I'm Coach Ramirez. Thank you for being he here with me today and enjoy that bow and arrow this weekend by shooting at targets. All right, boys and girls, thank you very much. Have a great weekend.